question. What exactly is a Bitcoin? The word Bitcoin has two definitions. You may have heard of Bitcoin as an online currency. That's Bitcoin with the lowercase b, and a Bitcoin is one unit of this currency which exists only as data that cannot be duplicated. You don't keep your Bitcoins in a bank, but in computer programs and phone apps called wallets. Bitcoin is not produced by, nor bound to, any country. Nowadays, you can use Bitcoin to buy almost anything, just as you would with dollars or euros. Bitcoin, with an uppercase B, refers to the payment network and protocol that contains the Bitcoin currency. The Bitcoin network enables this currency to be sent anywhere around the world instantly. One way to think of the Bitcoin network is as an extremely secure, giant database that exists everywhere in the world and can't be turned off. Many believe that all of humanity's important documents will one day be kept in the Bitcoin network because nothing else is as safe or accessible. Together, the Bitcoin network and currency provide us with a very unique and powerful new money, one that acts more like cash than credit or debit cards do. Paying for something in Bitcoin requires no information about you at all because it is like handing a merchant paper bills. They instantly receive your money without need for any middlemen, clearing houses, long processing times, nor even fees. Well, the Islamic State have just announced that they're going to make their own coinage. And they've put out announcements about what these coins are going to look like. They're going to stick to the gold standard and each coin, a gold coin, is going to be actually gold. So those gold coins and the, the range of coins that they're, they're thinking of producing will be worth about $650. So then, why am I excited about this? Why I'm excited is because it seems to me that this is accurately fulfilling Bible prophecy about the mark of the beast. Now I gave a presentation about this uh, a couple of months ago, and we looked there in Revelation 13, where we read that in the last days there's going to be this entity, the beast, who dominates the land, or the earth. Now I talked about this, about how we define the earth, or the land, and I said that biblically, in the Old Testament, there's two options. There's either the whole planet, or specifically the land, or the earth, the land promised to Abraham, from the river Euphrates to the river of Egypt. And I suggested that the focus of Bible prophecy is actually on that particular area of the land promised to Abraham. And so, this beast system is going to take over that land that territory. And what's so exciting, although very worrying from the short-term perspective, but what's so exciting is that the Islamic State organization appears to be an entity that could fulfill those prophetic requirements. And then, once that system is established, the Lord Jesus is going to come back and destroy it. And it's therefore a sign of the second coming of Jesus. Now, in Revelation 13, we read that this entity has got a mark, or a seal. And that seal, I suggested in my presentation a couple of months ago, is the seal of Muhammad. And it's to be placed on the, on the hands and on the foreheads. When you look at the photographs of Islamic State fighters, you will see that they have this sort of rough hand-drawn circle on their on their battle gear, battle gear on, their, uh, on their headgear, and a lot of them are wearing rings that have got this same sort of stamp or seal on it. And that is the, the seal of Muhammad, and that's why it's a roughly drawn circle, uh, to imitate that seal. And then written on it, there is the, the core of the Islamic faith, that there is one God, and Muhammad is his messenger. And I suggested that that seal of Muhammad, which is the identity, as it were, of the Islamic State, 
that it is that which uh, is in fact, or could be, that the, the mark of the beast. And unless you accept that sort of corporate identity, as it were, then you shall be killed, or you shall be unable to trade. And what I said a couple of months ago was that I could envisage the Islamic State introducing coinage or some form of currency that was stamped with this mark of the beast, with this insignia. So you can understand why having sort of gone public and, uh, and said that and written that and put it up on YouTube uh, a couple of months ago, well, I was pretty excited when I suddenly see the, these coins of... Uh, have been suggested, and you can get pictures of them off the internet. And then I sent uh, I sent them off to an Arabic-speaking friend of mine just to check it out. Like, what's written on the coins? And he wrote back to me, "Yeah, sure, it's written. There is uh, one God, uh, and Muhammad is his messenger." So then, this sort of corporate identity which the Islamic State has has continued onto these coins. Now, the Quran itself says that the true believers will have this mark in their forehead. And, of course, the Bible, it's, uh, Revelation, uh, sort of goes along with that by saying that uh, there's two groups of people. The people who've got the mark of the Lamb and the number of his name, as it were, in their foreheads, and those who have the mark of the beast and his number in their foreheads. And that mark is the number of a man. And that man, I think, is pretty clearly Muhammad, because this is the huge emphasis of Islam, or Mohammedanism, as it was earlier called. And in fact, if you look at my book, Islamic State, or you go to islamicstate.info, chapter 5, I type out there the word Muhammad in Greek. And if you add those letters up, you will find they come to 666 by gematria, that is, whereby each letter uh, has a numerical value. So I think there is definitely this connection between the seal of Muhammad, which is so much part of their calling cards, part of their corporate insignia, and the mark of the beast. My point is that their idea is that in their caliphate, in their kingdom, as it were, which according to them is to be in the very area of the land promised to Abraham, which is the focus of Bible prophecy in the book of Revelation, that in that area, in that area, in that territory, no one, according to them, is going to be able to buy or sell without using their coinage. And their coinage, their coins, have got this mark of the beast, this seal of Muhammad, on them. Now, there's another few uh, significant things that I found looking at those, looking at those coins. And one of them is that you would have expected that coins of an Islamic state would have some reference to Mecca and the mosque there, but there isn't. What there is, is a picture, a, a, an inscription, as it were, a, 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 a line uh, drawing inscription uh, of the Al-Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem. And that's in keeping with the theology of the Islamic State, which is increasingly to de-emphasize Mecca, I commented about this in another presentation, uh, and to emphasize instead the significance of Jerusalem. You can understand why that is, because Mecca's in Saudi Arabia, and the Saudis at this moment are part of the coalition that is bombing the Islamic State. So they're not going to pop off to Saudi Arabia, to Mecca, to do their, do their pilgrimage. Their focus is upon Jerusalem, and they have actually put up billboards. Their fighters of the Islamic State have put up billboards saying, Al-Quds next, Jerusalem in Arabic, uh, Jerusalem next. Their focus is very much on Jerusalem. They want Jerusalem as the capital of their caliphate or their, or their kingdom. And there's another coin in this set of coinage that they're proposing to to issue, which has got a map of the whole world. They believe that the whole planet should be under Islamic domination. And there's another one that's got a, a sword 
on it uh, as uh, another coin that's got a sword on it. And it is the symbol of jihad, of holy war. Joel 3, in the last days, sanctify or make holy war. And that is what these guys are quite clearly doing. So then, the focus upon Jerusalem, which I've mentioned a number of times in these presentations about the Islamic State uh, as uh, something that we should be looking for, because the, the Bible prophecies about the last days are, as I've said, particularly about the land promised to Abraham, but they are even more specifically about Jerusalem. The whole of the, Lord's, uh, the Lord Jesus' Olivet Prophecy, Matthew 24, Luke 21, Mark 13, is all about Jerusalem. Actually, there he is standing on the Temple Mount, and he says to the disciples, "Guys, all this is going to be going to be thrown down." And they're like, "Well, when? What are the signs that this is going to happen?" So, actually, the set of signs that the Lord gives as being the basis for His Second Coming are based very much, actually, around the destiny of Jerusalem. When you come to Revelation and you read from Revelation chapter 6, the seals, you are also reading uh, full uh, uh, of allusions to the Olivet Prophecy. And again, the focus, I suggest, is upon the destiny of Jerusalem. And I've said so many times in the studies on Revelation that the whole of Revelation is just full of Old Testament allusion and quotation. And if you go back to the context of a lot of those passages which are the source for the book of Revelation. You know, back to those Old Testament passages, they're talking specifically not only about Israel, but specifically about Jerusalem. Now, there's something else that's very interesting in relation to these new coins that are being released by the Islamic State, and that is that at least two of those coins are definitely consciously mimicking Israeli coins. There is the Islamic State's uh, coin with, with uh, palm trees on, and an Israeli coin has likewise got those palm trees on. The Islamic State uh, coin, uh, another of the coins, the, the gold dinar coin, has got the, uh, the seven uh, ears of wheat. But out of those seven ears of, uh, of corn, there, there are three of them that are in particular. And if you look at the angle of those three central ears of corn, one is slightly to the left, one is straight, one is slightly to the right. That is right off, right off an Israeli coin. Now what are they doing? They are saying, particularly, their message is, and they love to put you know, hidden messages in there, or not so hidden messages, in what they do. The message quite clearly is, we are the new Israel. That's right, our focus is upon Israel, and we are going to replace their coins with ours. And that is, of course, because they believe that they are the true Israel, that they are the true children of Abraham and Israel are the, uh, are the false seed, as it were, uh, and that they are the true seed, and the old argument of the, uh, of the millennia. So then, this increasing emphasis of the Islamic State upon Israel, and particularly upon Jerusalem, this is so significant, and this is really a sign that the Lord Jesus is going to come soon. But I urge you not to simply be intellectually fascinated by this, but contact us. We'll send you a Bible, if you don't have one, uh, with a commentary. Uh, or we'll send you the book Bible Basics. If you haven't got a Bible, uh, we'll send you one. But if you have, we'll send you the book Bible Basics. And you can systematically study this and decide to be baptized into the Lord Jesus Christ. This is Armageddon News.
on the agenda today. We discuss the mark of the beast, its connection to worship and trade, what the consequences are of taking it, and its startling links to Islamic scripture. Good day. A former Islamic terrorist named Walid Shubat, who has become a born-again Christian, has discovered a connection between the name of Allah and the 666. He explains that the Greek letters, XES, which John wrote in Greek, are actually the Arabic phrase, Bishmillah, which means, in the name of Allah. He says that what John saw, were actually Arabic letters, which John could not read, but which bore a resemblance to the Greek alphabet in which John wrote. It would have been pointless to write symbols of another language, which could not be read by the Greek readers of Revelation. So it is very possible that the Arabic Bishmila is indeed what John saw, and recorded in Greek letters. The first symbol of 666, are the Muslim crossed swords, the X character, a symbol of Islam and Jihad, which are often used by Muslims, on flags and military symbols. Notice the handles on the swords. The middle, E, symbol, is an Islamic symbol called Bishmila, Arabic for Allah. Or, in the name of Allah. When you turn the Bishmila on its side and place it in a mirror, it forms the same middle Greek character, as written by John. Notice the line drawn, above Allah, and the hook, on its end. The line, it is part of the word Allah, it is not an underline. Notice the same hook in the line drawn by John. It matches the line, in the name Allah exactly. The third character is the Greek character stigma, which means mark, or badge of servitude. The Greek XES or 666 has been noted not just in the Bishmila, but also in the Shahada, which is the Islamic confession of faith, which is what the Quran states will be written on the badge of servitude on the Day of Judgment. The XES has also been noted on an Islamic Chechen flag, which bears the crossed swords and the name Alu Akbar, meaning God is greater. This flag bears a striking resemblance to the Greek XES, as written by John. Even bearing the line, above the letter E, in the name, Allah. It has also been noted, that in the Arabic calligraphy form, the name, Alu Akbar, contains three sixes. Which can be clearly seen. Therefore a direct connection, between the name, Allahu Akbar and the number 666 can be perceived. The Bible speaks about taking the mark, on the forehead or right hand. It has been pointed out, that Muslims are already wearing marks, on their foreheads and arms, as Islamic banners of protest, and jihad. So Muslims have already been conditioned to take the mark, as a symbol of their belief. The Greek word sharagma, used for mark, means a stamp, an imprinted mark. So a follower of the Antichrist, will have a stamp on their body, or on some form of badge, to be placed on the forehead or arm. In John's time, the use for sharagma was reserved for slaves in what was called, a badge of servitude. So, it's a badge, that declares slavery, and ownership by the master. And his followers, use it to demonstrate allegiance to this master. This would fit Islam, since according to Islamic theology, Muslims are slaves of Allah. And Islam is the religion of, submission. Take a look at the many different Islamic headbands, which have been created, for a Muslim to wear, as a sign of their faith. There is a very interesting headband, which actually has the XES and the name of Allah, written on it, with crossed swords. They call it, the Shahid, headband. Strong's Hebrew Dictionary, tells us exactly what the name Allah, really means. The name Allah is actually the Hebrew word, for curse. Or oath. Strong's Dictionary says it's an imprecation, curse, cursing, execration, oath, or swearing. So, Allah is actually the word for a curse. And amazingly, it was the serpent in the Garden of Eden which became the first being to be cursed by God. Therefore, a connection between the serpent being cursed and Allah, which means a curse, is very surprising. It would appear that by wearing the name Allah, you are in point of fact, wearing a curse. Which would explain why the name Allah, is in the shape, 
of the cursed serpent. In the Bible, Revelation 12 9 describes Satan as the great dragon, that old serpent, called the devil, and Satan. Then the book of Revelation goes on to speak about the great dragon Satan, giving his throne to the Antichrist. And a group of people, worshipping the dragon, which has given them this Antichrist king. Revelation 13 4. And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? What people would knowingly worship the dragon Satan? The answer is none. These people have no idea they are actually worshipping Satan. But they are shouting his praises in the streets, because the dragon has given them a king. What type of people would actually stand in the street? praising their God for giving them an empire and strong king, that no one dare make war against. How do Muslims praise their God? By shouting Allahu Akbar. This is how they worship the dragon Satan. By shouting Allah is great. The Bible doesn't just call Satan the dragon but, the great, dragon. The great, is actually part of the name of Allah. But in the Bible the great, is part of the name for the dragon. Even the whore of Babylon who rides the beast, has a name written on her head. Mystery Babylon, the great. A city that thinks she is great. The word for great is Akbar, and is indeed a boast, which only the Muslims cry out. The other meaning of the Hebrew word Allah, or curse, is an oath. A binding oath. As we'll discover later, a binding oath, is exactly what Allah requires, from his followers. In the Garden of Eden. While speaking to the serpent, God gave us a very profound prophecy, concerning the end days. Genesis 3.15 says, I will make you and the woman hate each other. Her offspring and yours, will always be enemies. Her offspring, will crush your head. And you will bite her offspring's heel. God spoke of hatred between, the serpent Satan, and the woman Israel. Then he speaks about two seeds. The seed of the woman, and the seed of the serpent. The seed of the woman, whose heel was bitten, by the serpent, was the promised Messiah, Jesus Christ, which was crucified having nails driven through his feet, which left him with two puncture marks. As if he had been bitten by a serpent. But who is the seed of the serpent? I believe it is speaking, about the promised son of the serpent, a false messiah. To find out, who these two opposing races are, we don't have to look very far. We know that the woman is Israel, which gave birth to the Messiah. We only need now look, for the race of people, which according to this verse hates Israel, like the serpent does. This race is none other than the Muslims. But wait, God, is describing that a seed, will come from the serpents. This seed of the serpent, is describing the Antichrist, which will come from the people, which Satan has chosen because of their hatred for Israel. Just like Jesus, was the promised seed of the woman, Israel. So Islam is also waiting, for Allah, to send them a promised Messiah. Called the Imam Mahdi, Islam's twelfth Imam. This Mahdi, is the seed of the serpent, Allah. And this Mahdi, will become the Caliph and King of Islam. Uniting all, the divided Islamic lands, which were given a deadly head wound when the caliph of the Ottoman Empire, was dissolved, causing their empire to break up. This caliph will unite the Islamic lands, and will restore the office, of the caliph, which the Bible describes, as the deadly head wound, being healed. And all the Islamic world will wander after the beast. He will also be the one, to wage war against Jesus Christ, in the Battle of Armageddon. A startling connection, between the mark of the beast and Islamic belief about the last days, has been discovered. Amazingly, and in keeping perfectly with what the Bible predicted so long ago, regarding the beast and his mark, the badge of servitude, is in fact an Islamic commandment from Muhammad himself, who said, Allah, will save a man from my nation, above all creation on judgment day. In front of him will be laid ninety-nine registers, for his sins, Every register, is as long as the eye can see. Then he is asked, Do you deny any of these? Then he says, No, O Lord. Then he is asked,
Do you have any excuse? He responds, No Lord, then he is told, You have but one good deed, and there will be no condemnation for you today. A badge is brought forth. Scrolled across it are the words, No God but Allah, and Muhammad is his messenger. Then he asked to bring forth his deeds. He asks, O Lord, what is this badge that is with these registers? He is told, You will receive no condemnation. The deeds are put on one hand, and the badge in the other. Then the registers will float, and the badge will outweigh the registers. Tamathi 2639. The badge of servitude is the Islamic counterfeit of Jesus Christ, which Muhammad claimed would pardon the wearer of all their sins on Judgment Day. To sum it up, the name of the beast, along with variations of the name of Allah, will be made compulsory, as a sign of submission on the right arm or forehead. Islam is submission and allegiance to a foreign god, the badge being spoken of, by Muhammad is the Shahada, which is blasphemous, and is worn by Muslims as a badge on the foreheads. The Shahada is the Muslim declaration of belief. It states, there is no god but Allah, and Muhammad, is the messenger of Allah. If this jihad is part of the mark of the beast, those who take it, will be forever denying Jesus, as the Son of God, and sealing themselves to Islam. Which is the only religion, which actually denies Jesus, as the Son of God, in its scriptures. The Bible mentions this as one of the prerequisites of the Antichrist and his followers. That he will deny Jesus as the Son of God. 1 John 2.22 says, Who is the liar? but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ. He is the Antichrist, who denies the Father and the Son. Denying that Jesus is the Son of Father God, is a Muslim belief. They state it is blasphemous, that God, could have had, a son. So wearing any mark, or badge of Islam, would be to officially deny Jesus Christ, the only hope of salvation. These things meet the biblical requirements for the mark of the beast. The only thing left to be instituted, is the official government mark. Issued by the Islamic Empire. A mark, without which, no one will be able to buy, or sell, unless they have shown allegiance to Islam. There will be no hope of salvation, for those, who take, that mark. Even the part of the Bible that predicted the beast will mark the foreheads is in the Quran and the Hadith. Al-Ard, literally the beast of the earth, is an Islamic version of the account of the beast of the earth, in Revelation 13:11, But unlike the Bible, in which the beast is evil, the Quran, gives him a holy mission to revive Islam, and mark the foreheads, of all true Muslim believers. According to Islamic tradition, the beast emerges in the last days. The Quran states, and when the word is fulfilled concerning them, we shall bring forth, a beast of the earth to speak unto them. Because mankind had not faith in our revelations, Quran 2782. The Prophet of Islam declared, The first signs that will come is the rising of the sun, from the place of his setting, and emergence of the beast, upon the people. Whichever of these two occurs before the other, then the other is right behind it. Why do Muslims mark their foreheads with badges of submission to Allah? It comes from their belief that the end days are near. Their Quran states, the task of the beast, will be to distinguish the believers from the non-believers. With Prophet Moses' staff, it the beast, will draw a line, on the forehead of every Muslim believer. Whereby his face, will become bright and illuminous, and with a ring of Solomon. It will seal the nose of every non-believer. Whereby his whole face will become black. Thus there will be complete distinction, between the Muslim, and non-Muslim. So that if many parties sit at a dinner table, the Muslim and non-Muslim will be distinguished. So Muslims describe, that the false prophet, or beast of the earth will mark their foreheads with the staff of Moses. The staff of Moses, was used to perform the miracles and plagues of Egypt. It was also Moses' staff, which turned into a snake. Now the Muslims, are describing being marked on the forehead, with the serpent staff of Moses a staff which brought curses upon Egypt, and will bring a curse upon those who take its mark. From this we see, the Muslims are describing a man with great power and a worker of miraculous miracles.
but the Bible says that this beast of the earth's power will be the working of Satan, and not God. Can you imagine a Muslim's shock? When they study the Bible. Muslims are taught that a beast would come out of the earth, and he would mark the foreheads of all true Muslims. Do you see how Satan, has turned everything upside down for Muslims? Muslims are being taught, to desire the mark of the beast. Earlier, we discussed the name, Allah. Not only, that it meant curse, but also that it meant an oath. This is because Allah, requires all his followers to take an oath of allegiance. In the early days of Muhammad's career, he often asked those who had expressed a desire to follow him, to make a pledge of allegiance or submission to him. This pledge is known as bayah. It is an outward oath, or pledge promising allegiance and complete submission, to the emir or caliph. After Muhammad died, this practice of making a pledge, was carried on, under the caliphs. The Muslims would make a pledge of allegiance to the caliph, and likewise the caliph would make a pledge of allegiance to Allah. To rule strictly according to Islamic law. Many Islamists including, Adnan Oktar, often speak about the restoration of the Islamic caliphate, in the Middle East. They also mention the Pledge of Allegiance or Bayah. Under a Muslim empire, it is mandatory, for every Muslim to take this Pledge of Allegiance, and to submit by binding themselves, to the Caliph, as their master. The Arabic name for this pledge, is Bayah, which shockingly translates, as the word sell. Muslims are well aware of this, that by taking this pledge, they are selling themselves, to the Caliph, as a slave. The Bible says, Revelation 14 9. If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead, or in his hand, he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels, and in the presence of the Lamb, and the smoke of their torment, ascends up forever and ever. This worship of the Antichrist, or his emblem, describes perfectly the Pledge of Allegiance to the Caliph as master. Once people have worshipped him, they will receive his mark to show their submission, and will wear it proudly, on their foreheads or hands. The first Ahmadiyya Caliph, issued a warning. To those wishing, to offer their bayah at his hand. By saying, if you want to do bayah at my hand, be very clear, what bayah means. Bayah means to sell, yourselves. A man gives up everything, and that is why Allah, has called this man, Abd. Meaning one who worships. Notice that it is made clear, that Bayah, is worship. So when the Bible says that people will worship the beast, Bayah, is by Islamic definition. Worship. It now makes perfect sense, why the Greek word for mark, which is sharagma in the book of Revelation, means a badge of servitude, as a slave. For people are going to sell their souls to the Antichrist, and receive God's judgment, of fire and damnation for eternity, without rest. Unfortunately Islam has deceived Muslims, into wanting this mark and portraying it as something holy, rather than a seal, which will damn their souls, to eternal fire and suffering. Like anxious children, many very eager Islamists look forward to the day, when all Islamic citizens, of the regions and lands under the Caliphate, will be required to make a pledge to the Caliph. According to Islamic tradition, those who do not make this pledge will die the death of an idolater. The Islamic tradition states, one who withdraws his hand from the obedience to the ruler, Emir, will find no argument in his defense, when he stand before Allah, on the day of judgment. And one who dies without having bound himself, by an oath of allegiance, Bayah, to an Emir, will die the death, of one belonging to the days of Jahiliyyah. Pre-Islamic days of ignorance, and idolatry. Similar to the Antichrist, Islamists are already planning to kill those, who refuse to give allegiance to the Emir, or Caliph as their spiritual leader. The evidence of the mistreatment of Christians and Jews in the Islamic system is immense. But it will of course only increase in the days to come. This is what the Bible warned, when it stated that whoever did not worship the beast, and receive his mark would be killed. It's no coincidence, that the Bible states, the method of killing will be beheading. For that is the system of capital punishment found in Islamic countries. Which shows us definitively, that the Antichrist will indeed rise, and begin his global war, from the Middle East, and not the EU, 
as has been believed. Revelation 24 And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded, for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads, or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ, a thousand years. The mark of the beast, will be visible on the forehead or hand, as a means of discerning people, who have not yet submitted, to the king of the Middle East. The mark is directly linked to the worship and submission to the beast. The means, of being able to buy, and sell, is only a secondary result. The main purpose of the mark, is to be a visible sign, to distinguish those who have worshipped the beast, versus those who have not. The worship of the beast and the mark go hand in hand, as soon as people have worshipped they will receive the mark of their submission. Seeing that the Antichrist's empire will be Islamic, he will enforce a law that, without the mark people will not be allowed to buy, or sell. So if you went to a grocery store, and the cashier didn't see the mark, on your forehead or hand, showing that you submitted to the beast and his empire, the cashier would not be allowed to take your money. The book of Revelation does not say, that money will not exist, only that buying and selling, would be prohibited without the mark. God is concerned with the worship and submission to the beast and the sealing of oneself, with the name of a false god. It's the submission, to the Islamic Antichrist, and the worship, of the empire's image, which sends people to hell, not the buying and selling. Once people have sealed themselves, with the mark of the Islamic empire, they will share the same fate, as the Antichrist, which the Bible states is the lake of fire. By taking this mark, they will be denying Yahweh, and his son, Jesus Christ, and sealing themselves with the name of this false god, and a false belief system which denies Jesus Christ, as the Son of God. There will be no forgiveness of this sin. Only the terrible fate, which has been foretold, and eternal suffering. The Bible states, the false prophet will perform wondrous miracles. Even making what seems like holy fire, descend from heaven. And by these miracles, he will lead millions astray, into submitting and worshipping this Middle East king, who claims to be God. His miracles will be so deceptive that Jesus warns that the elect of God may even be deceived by his lies and miraculous wonders. The Bible says many will fall away and believe that God is speaking through this man. But the true believers will stand their ground, and hold on to their faith in Jesus Christ, even under terrible persecution and beheading. And they will be the ones better off in the end and be resurrected, when Jesus Christ returns. For the slaughter of the Christians, God will pour out his judgment, and cause a terribly painful sore, to appear on those, who have taken the mark or worship the Antichrist's image. The original Greek, describes this sore, as a foul, and malignant, ulcerated sore, or an evil, poisoning wound. It will appear, like boils, all over their bodies. And the pain, will be so bad, that they will cry out in agony, with no relief. This will be part of God's judgment, for turning on the Christians and putting them to death. The Bible, says that the Antichrist, will proclaim that he is God. No doubt, he will claim that judgment day has come. And he is judging the world, by putting Christians and Jews to death, for blasphemy. With his army, he will conquer Jerusalem, and take over the Jewish temple. He will sit down in God's temple, proclaiming that he is God. The Bible, in 2 Thessalonians 2 4 says, He will oppose every so called God, or object of worship, and will put himself above them all. He will even go in and sit down in God's temple, and claim to be God. Daniel 11:31 says, He will send troops to pollute the temple and the fortress, and he will stop the daily sacrifices. Then he will set up that horrible thing that causes destruction. Daniel 12:11 says, From the time the daily burnt offering is taken away, and the disgusting thing, that causes destruction, is set up, there will be 1,290 days. This horrible thing, is called the abomination, which causes desolation. God says, it will sit there 1,290 days. Then Jesus will appear from heaven to wage war, against the Antichrist, who will have deceived the whole world, into believing he was God, 
through his satanic miracles. The Shiite Muslims claim that their Mahdi will rule from the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. And the Bible states emphatically that he is the Antichrist, who will sit in God's temple. Joel Richardson, who has written extensively about the coming Islamic Antichrist, states that the Prime Minister of Turkey, Recep Erdogan, is paving the way for the Antichrist as he is trying to revive the Ottoman Caliphate, in Turkey. The resurrection of the Ottoman Caliphate, could describe the beast, whose deadly wound was yield, and after which the whole world will be amazed, seeing an old Middle East empire, restored. The Tugra, was the personal seal of the Ottoman Caliphs, and every Ottoman Caliph had his personal seal designed in the same pattern. The Tugra consists of the name of the father and the son, the ruling caliph, and the words forever victorious. A triple S has always been considered an occult mystery Babylonian way of writing the 666. Interestingly, a triple S can clearly be seen in the seal of the Ottomans. If the mark is to be stamped on the skin of the forehead or hand, it doesn't necessarily have to be a permanent tattoo. Although, it may very well be. But Muslims have been using henna tattoos for hundreds of years. So it's possible that henna may be used as the means by which these marks are stamped on the skin. But the mark may also take the form of a badge to be worn on the forehead or right arm. As the word for mark, which is sharagma, can also mean a badge of servitude. It must also be noted that the Taliban have also been trying to revive the Islamic Caliphate, in Iraq. And, the President of Iran, is making himself the personal spokesman for the Mahdi, the Islamic Messiah. As the Quran teaches, that the Mahdi will emerge out of chaos. So the Iranian President, has made it his mission, to create this chaos, so that the Mahdi will appear, and bring on the Day of Judgment. Jesus said that oaths, and pledges, come from Satan himself. This includes swearing on a Bible in court. No wonder the Antichrist, requires people to swear, an oath of allegiance to him. Jesus said in Matthew 5:34, But I say to you, take no oaths at all. But let your words be simply, yes or no, and whatever is more than these, is of the evil one. So to recap, do not take the bayer the oath of allegiance to the Mahdi or Caliph who claims to be God, and utters blasphemies against Jesus Christ, even denying him as the Son of God. Do not take the mark of his empire, as a stamp on your forehead or hand, or wear his mark, as a badge on your forehead or right arm. And do not worship the image which he sets up, even though it speaks, and you may be put to death, or imprisoned, because of your refusal to bow to it. Rather believe in God's only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross, for your sins. Call upon his name, and you shall be saved. Only Jesus, has the power to save. His name, is the only one, in all the world that can save anyone. For the original name of Jesus, in Hebrew, is, Yeshua. Which means, salvation. And salvation, is found in no other. So cry out to God today, in the name of his son Yeshua. Believe in what he did for you on the cross, and you shall be, saved. John 3:16. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son. That whoever believes in him, should not perish, but have everlasting life. Please pray this prayer, today. Father God, I believe that you sent your son, Jesus Christ to die on the cross for my sins. I believe that he died, and was resurrected, and is coming back to judge the living and the dead. Father, I repent. Please forgive me of all my sins. Come into my heart, and make me, your child. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. If you have said this prayer, you are now, a child of God. Please go and find a born again. Christian Church, where you can have fellowship with other believers. Thank you for listening. Please see our other broadcasts on the end days. This program has no copyright and may be distributed freely. The Islamic
Islamic Antichrist book, by John Preacher, contains astounding insights into the Book of Revelation. And it's available for free, and can be downloaded, from the address below. For more books and videos on the Islamic Antichrist, visit Joel Richardson's website. www.joelstrumpet.com